are so when you're dating you only want to work look at the good things so you only want to develop your must-have list and he has to have blue eyes and you know brown hair whatever instead of really making <laughs> and a deep voice you got it <laughs> instead of making those qualities of that person that you are asking god for but the can't have list is equally important if politics and your persuasion is important, you want to find someone who's compatible in that area. If your particular church is important to you, not are they a Christian generic, but if your particular church is important, then that's important. Mm, yeah. There are a lot of times, I think people can be unequally yoked even if they're Christians. Oh, mm. I believe that. Definitely. Oh, yeah. If they're really adamant about their particular teachings in their church, then they would be unequally yoked if they were in a church that was much more liberal or the reverse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And people don't think of that sometimes. But those are issues that um, on that must-have, can't-have list that's really important. Mm, yes, those are important. So you have a must-have, and these are the things that I just have to have and I'm not going to bend. And then you have a can't-have. Um, like, for instance, if, so, if someone smokes, you don't want to be someone that smokes. That's a big issue. So that should be on your can't-have list. I recommend to people that they sit down with a cup of tea some night and write out like 30 things in their ideal mate that they would love to have. Then start praying about it and bring it down to like 10. 10 really important issues. The same thing on the can't-have list. Think about all the things you didn't like in past relationships and put those on the can't-have list. And then again, bring it down to 10 important things that you are believing God that this person will not have, just as you're believing God that this person that he brings in your life will have, because you're going to have discernment and wisdom as you seek God. Yes. Mm. But the beautiful thing about it is the fact that it can occur, because we're looking at it right now. We are. We are. So <laughs> it, it, it definitely can occur, and that's where the excitement comes in for those who are listening. If you do have a question, please do call in. DW, give that number again. Uh, it's uh, 702, oh, yeah, I can't see it, i got to move that thing, 650-KKVV, 702-650-5588, uh, if you're streaming, it's 1-800-366-8883. There you go, you did that one great. I'm bringing my glasses next week. <laughs> Can I say one last thing on the can't have, must have? Yes. You do not show it to your pr prospective mate. That's for you and God. Right, exactly. Because if you do, it can become very manipulative, and you'll never know the real person. Right, definitely. Right. And, and that's going to go to the question I'm going to ask right now. Do you feel when we get older, we tend to search or settle? And I love that question because oh, yeah, sometimes question. we go, well, you know, he is this, he is that, and he does, act, and he does say this, so, but that's not really who you want. No. Um, I think... I think there is a tendency to, to settle, but I also believe if you really, um, and, and I d address that in, in that chapter on the must-have, can't-have, your soulmate chapter, if you really believe these things you've prayed about are important and you have established those things, then, um, you know, there's nothing worse than being in a bad marriage at this age of our life. I mean, I have met people. I had a man call me just a few months ago. He had, he's a wonderful professional musician. And he called me about meeting this girl, and she lived in, he lived in East Coast, she lived in West Coast, but she was a, absolutely wonderful, of course. So she wanted to get married right away, and they did. And it lasted like about three months, because he left his whole ministry relationships and went to the West Coast and it, it, when he got there he found out that she wasn't the person that he thought he was in one month. I recommend no matter who you are that you date at least a year. That gives you the chance to go through holidays, birthdays, uh, difficult times, mm -hmm. good times. Uh, and so, you know, that this is important I think. Yes. We have a caller. So Larry's on the line. Hi, Larry. How are you doing, and what's your question? 
Good. Uh, Samantha and Brenda are two of my favorite people in all the world. Uh, I never, I are, never miss Samantha's. Are you single, Larry? No, <laughs> I've been married 52 years. Good for you. Good for you. But my question for Samantha is this. Samantha, uh, how did you actually meet Randy? Was he a part of the swinging, not swinging singles? <laughs> <laughs> the savvy singles. I'm sorry. Brenda, you got me doing it. <laughs> Um, actually, he, uh, we met in a way that I think is very helpful as you are older. Uh, we, I was teaching singles um, seminars at an organization that he was the director of. And so we became friends for a couple of years. We knew who each other were and we worked together before we started dating. So it was a very nice thing to be able to secretly see who that person was uh, before we dated and, and before God brought us together in a delightful way. We actually were both teaching seminars on a cruise, and then that's when we started dating. So God gets kind of threw us together because we didn't have enough sense earlier to do anything about it, I guess. <laughs> Does that, that satisfy you there, Larry? That's fine. Great. Thanks, Samantha. Thank Thanks you for calling, calling Larry. Larry. Thank you, Larry. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, we're down to two minutes, so I'm going to ask you, D.W., to pick out one of the hardest questions that she can answer in two minutes. In two minutes? <laughs> uh, well, what if Randy had been five foot eleven? Yeah, forget <laughs> it. Forget <laughs> it. <laughs> that didn't sound so hard. Your turn. <laughs> So uh, I like the part about the, the settling and the, and, and the searching. I, I think her answer is correct. We tend to settle, but in Christ, you know, we could do all things. And so I'm telling those singles that if you are single and you're savvy, continue to work on yourself, continue to uh, keep yourself active like we see mm -hmm. she does, and then that, that right person will come along. And sometimes that right person is your friend. Mm -hmm. So, Samantha, please give your website again so if they have questions or they want to go and get that book, they can. And um, I like the one that you just talked about because I think we need to work on ourselves first. So we need that we book do. first. We do. And that's why I wrote it first. Uh, and also, they can hear the program. I can hear there We've archived Psalms of Hope on my website, too. So it's samanthalandy.com, L-A-N-D-Y. And that one fantastic book that we need first? Is Savvy Singles Handbook. It's a red one. So okay. you can't miss it on my website. Okay, not savory, not <laughs> sing, no, swinging, no. Yeah. <laughs> savvy. Yes. Savvy singles. Okay, well, if you had one thing to tell a person, say that in 20 seconds. The one thing I would tell single people is trusting God and don't be afraid to try new things. Don't be afraid to move out into new circles and develop new hobbies, but most of all, trust God that he will lead you and guide you. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in, and tune in again next week. Thank you for tuning in every Saturday at 2.02 p.m. to Open Book Radio Club, where like-minded people tell their stories, poets, authors, Small businesses, spoken word, and music writers come together as a community. So don't forget, tune in every Saturday at 2.02 p.m. to Open Book Radio Club. Hello, this is Samantha Landy. I'd like to invite you to listen to Psalms of Hope on Tuesday mornings at 9.30 here on KKVV. And if you'd like more information about my ministry, you can go to...